Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts another reading vlog, so stay tuned. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done today because I have appointments and I have a video that I was supposed to edit yesterday but I didn't because I was distracted with um, all of the reading sprint stuff. But I did want to go ahead and get started with the vlog and tell you what I'd like to try to read this week. Uh, but also I realized when I wrapped up last week's vlog. I forgot to show you what books I purchased yesterday. So I went shopping yesterday morning at Books A Million because I had this coupon and it was expiring yesterday. It was like the last day you could use and it was $10 off $40 or more in store. So I went and hit up their like bargain shelves. So let me start with showing you those. I have two bags full of books and I'm very excited about them. Okay, so the first one I have here is actually one that I saw from, uh, I think it was Jay from J.D. Ray Reads and uh, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. Uh, it's one of the middle grade monthlies or whatever um, books that they've read and it's the Crooked Sixpence. And this gives me like Nevermore vibes. It says, not long after policemen armed with toilet brushes appear at their door, Ivy Sparrow and her older brother Seb go tumbling into a world unlike their own. Welcome to Ludenor, the secret underground city where uncommon buttons can mend headaches, uncommon bells chime in to offer directions, and uncommon vacuum cleaners are perfect if you need to make a clean getaway, which Ivy usually does. But life in Ludenor isn't all charmed. The town is tormented by an evil guild called the Dirge that has kidnapped Ivy and Seb's parents. To get them back, Ivy must race to uncover the greatest uncommon treasure of them all, if only she knew what she was looking for. And this one was only $2.97. And then we have Emergency Contact and Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. So, let's see. This one says... Uh, emergency contact says for Penny Lee high school was a total non-event her friends were okay her grades were fine and while she'd somehow landed a boyfriend they never managed to know much about each other now Penny is heading to college in Austin Texas to learn how to become a writer it's 79 miles and a zillion light years away from everything she can't wait to leave behind Sam stuck literally figuratively emotionally financially he works at a cafe and sleeps there too on a mattress on the floor of an empty storage room upstairs he knows that this is the god-awful chapter of his life that will serve as inspiration when he's a famous movie director, but right this second, the 17 bucks in his checking account and his dying laptop are really testing him. When Sam and Penny cross paths, it's less meet-cute and more a collision of unbearable awkwardness. Still, they swap numbers and stay in touch via text and soon become digitally inseparable, sharing their deepest anxieties and secret dreams without the humiliating weirdness of having to, you know, see each other. And I think that sounds really cute. And then a permanent record says, On paper, college dropout Pablo Neruda Rind doesn't have a whole lot going for him. His graveyard shift at a 24-hour deli in Brooklyn is a struggle. Plus, he's up to his eyeballs and credit card debt. Never mind the state of his student loans. Pop juggernaut Leanna Smart has enough social media followers to populate whole continents. The brand is unstoppable. She graduated from child stardom to become an international icon, and her adult life is a queasing blur of private planes, hotel rooms, and strangers screaming for her just to notice them. When Leanna and Pablo meet at 5 a.m. at the bodega in the dead of winter, it's absurd to think they, they'd be a thing. But as they discover who they are, who they want to be, and how to defy the expectations of everyone else, Lee and Pop turn to each other, which of course is when things get properly complicated. And this has like a clear cover, so it looks like this, but then removing the cover looks like so. And this was $5.97 and this was $3.97. And then we have an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. This one was $5.97. This says, 
In Hank Green's sweeping cinematic debut novel, a young woman becomes an overnight celebrity before realizing she's part of something bigger and stranger than anyone could have possibly imagined. The Carls just appeared. Roaming through New York City at 3 a.m., 23-year-old April May stumbles across a giant sculpture, delighted by its appearance and craftsmanship, like a 10-foot-tall transformer wearing a suit of samurai armor. April and her best friend Andy make a video with it, which Andy uploads to YouTube. The next day, April wakes up to a viral video and a new life. News quickly spreads that there are Carls in dozens of cities around the world, from Beijing to Buenos Aires, and April, as their first documentarian, finds herself at the center of an intense international media spotlight. Seizing the opportunity to make her mark on the world, April now has to deal with the consequences her new particular brand of fame has on her relationships, her safety, and her own identity. And all eyes are on April to figure out not just what the crawls are, but what they want from us. Compulsively entertaining and powerfully relevant, an absolutely remarkable thing grapples with big themes including how the social internet is changing fame, rhetoric, and radicalization. How our culture deals with fear and uncertainty, and how vilification and adoration spring from the same dehuman dehumanization that follows a life in the public eye. The beginning of an exciting fiction career, an absolutely remarkable thing, is a bold and insightful novel of now. I thought that sounded really interesting. Then we have Genesis Begins Again by Alicia D. Williams. And... See what this one looks like pink and orange this says there are 96 reasons why 13 year old genesis dislikes herself she knows the exact number because she keeps a list because her family is always being put out of their house because her dad has a gambling problem and maybe a drinking problem too because genesis knows this is all her fault because she wasn't born looking like mama because she is too black Genesis is determined to fix her family, and she's willing to try anything to do so, even if it means harming herself in the process. But when she starts to find a thing or two she actually likes about herself, she discovers that changing her own attitude is the first step in helping change others. And then we have Blended by Sharon M. Draper. And this says... Oh, let me see what this looks Pink and white. This says, You're so exotic. You look so unusual, but what are you really? 11 year old Isabella, whose father is black and mother is white, is used to these kinds of comments, but it doesn't mean she likes them. And now that her parents are divorced and getting along worse than ever, Isabella feels like a push me, pull me toy. Being split between mom and dad is more than switching houses, switching nicknames, switching backpacks. It's switching identities. If you're only seen as half of this and half of that, how can you ever feel whole? Oh, and this one was $5.97, and this one was $6.97. And then we have How to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow, and this one was $5.97. It says, here's what happens when your mother dies. It's the brightest day of summer, and it's dark outside. It's dark in your house, dark in your room, and dark in your heart. You feel like the darkness is going to split you apart. That's how it feels for Tiger. It's always been Tiger and her mother against the world. Then on a day like any other, Tiger's mother dies. And now it's Tiger, alone. Here's how you learn to make friends with the dark. From the author of the powerful and heartbreaking novel, Girl in Pieces, comes a story about an ordinary girl who loses everything in an instant and how she must learn to live all over again. And then the last book I have here is actually a nonfiction. It is, I Will Always Write Back, How One Letter Changed Two Lives by Caitlin Alfrica, Martin Gonda, and Liz Welch, or with Liz Welch. This is the true story of an all-American girl and a boy from Zimbabwe and the letter that changed both of their lives forever. It started as an assignment. Everyone in Caitlin's class wrote to an unknown student in a distant place. Martin was lucky to even receive a pen pal letter. There were only 10 letters and 50 kids in his class, but he was the top student, so he got the first one. That letter was the beginning of a correspondence that spanned six years and changed two lives. In this compelling memoir with an updated epilogue for this edition, Caitlin and Martin recount how they became best friends and better people through their long distance exchange. And I thought that sounded like it was going to be really interesting to read. 
Oh, and this one was $4.97. Okay, so those are all of the books that I purchased from Books A Million. And then, I'm going to have to leave here in just a second. Really quick, what I want to read this week. I want to read both of my Have I Read It? Lori Foster books. So we have Don't Tempt Me and Charade. I don't know that either of these count for any of my Mary Bookmas prompts. No. Uh, also, I want to read Beach Read, which... My is for the prompt my favorite things featuring a favorite trope we have bookish characters in here i'm also going to buddy read scammed by Kristen simmons with kaylani and clint i'm also continuing my buddy read of empire of storms and tower of dawn and i also intend on reading the christmas sisters and vlogging all of this and opening up the gifts and all of that as i get to those parts so that is what I'd like to get done this week. Oh, also I found out that there was like a novella that goes with the um, the Wolves of Mercy Falls series called Sinner and it follows one of the characters in the book called Cole. And so I have the audiobook of that on Hoopla and I want to listen to that this week if possible too. We'll see if I can get everything done. But now I have to go because I have to go pick up Xander. So I will talk to you later. So as predicted yesterday, I did not get as much reading done as I would have liked. Uh, I'm trying to kind of catch up on some of that now. I did today finish Don't Tempt Me by Lori Foster. And I don't think this is any of my Mary Bookmas props. No, this was one of my Have I Read It's. And I enjoyed this. Uh, it's about a girl named Honor Brown who... She's just moved into this new house that's a very, very run down and needs a lot of work. But she moved into this house so that she could be closer to this facility where her grandfather is now living. He has, a lot, he's like 80 something years old. He has a lot of health problems and has dementia and she has to go to the facility several times, uh, often in the middle of the night because she's really the only body, only person that he recognizes and feels safe with because she's lived with him since she was a child and yeah he's the only one she's the only one that he's okay with but this neighborhood that she's moved into is maybe not the safest neighborhood but she just so happens to be surrounded by hot guys so as soon as she arrives, her neighbor, Jason, is there in all of his hot contractor sexiness with his shirt off, and his hot brother's there, and his brother's son, who's also hot, is there, and apparently the sheriff lives down the street, and there's a martial arts guy across the street, and they're all just ridiculously hot. <laughs> um, and he's trying to, like, hot sexy contractor guy is trying to help her any way he can. He's like instantly smitten with her and she has a hard time accepting help from anyone. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. There are quite some steamy scenes in here. Uh, this is an adult romance and I want to say I'll give this a 3.75. Also my battery's flashing so let me change that out and I'll be right back. Okay sorry if there was an angle change. Anyway, while we were out yesterday, uh, we made a stop by Books A Million. So yesterday I showed you books that I got from Books A Million, but there was one book that I didn't show you because as I was sitting in my library and I could see all the books on my shelves, I realized that one of the books that I bought, I already owned. <laughs> so yesterday while we were out, we went by Books A Million and I swapped it out. So the book that I ended up having a double copy of was The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. So I took that one back and I purchased I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas. And let's see, this says Friends for Life or Death, Spring Break Aruba, Swimming, Sunshine, and Golden Beaches. It was supposed to be the best time of Anna's life, Paradise. But then the unthinkable happens. Anna's best friend is found brutally murdered, and when the local police begin to investigate the gruesome crime, suspicion falls, upon, falls on one person, Anna. They think she's dangerous, and they're determined to prove her guilt. 
With the police and media sparking a witch hunt against her, Anna is running out of time to prove her innocence. But as she digs deeper into her friend's final moments, she finds a tangled web of secrets, lies, and betrayal. Will she clear her name in time? And when the truth is finally revealed, it's more shocking than anyone could have imagined. And it sounds really good. The only other reading that I've gotten done today is some of Empire of Storms. I'm currently on 373. I think I got like, I don't remember where exactly I was, but something like that many pages <laughs> approximately. And I got a new subscription box that came in and I want to show it to you. It's called Books That Matter and I purchased, a, I think it was a year of this and they have a middle grade one too and I want to say it's like Brave Girls Book Club or something like that. But Books That Matter is a monthly subscription box for the empowerment and inspiration of women and girls through literature. I will link all of the information down below, but it's a rather thin box. Opening it up, it looks like so. It's actually not super expensive. I was surprised by the price of this box. And it is a UK subscription box. And even with shipping, I think it is probably cheaper than some of the, you know, American ones. Anyway. Let's open this up and see what we got. It looks like so. All right, what do we have in here? So we have some postcards. We've got Girl Power, Hear Her, and Empowered Women, Empower Women. So we've got those. We have this small a book here. It's No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. And I'm guessing maybe this is her. I think so. It says uh, Greta Thunberg was born in 2003. In August 2018, she decided not to go to school one day, starting a strike for the climate outside the Swedish parliament. Her actions ended up sparking a global movement for action against the climate crisis, inspiring millions of pupils to go on strike for our planet, and earning her the prestigious Prix Liberté, as well as a Nobel Peace Prize nomination. Greta has Asperger's and considers it a gift, which has enabled her to see the climate crisis in black and white. No One is Too Small to Make a Difference is Greta's first book in English, collecting her speeches from climate rallies across Europe to audiences at the UN, the World Economic Forum, the United States Congress, and the British Parliament. Her next book, Our House is on Fire, Scenes of a Family and a Planet in Crisis, is a memoir jointly written with her mother, the opera singer Melina Ehrman, her sister Beta Ehrman, and her father Savant Thunberg. Cool. And it's pretty short. It looks like it's only 106 pages and I mean, they're small pages and the text is not very small. So this will be a quick read. Then we have a bookmark here that says Loud Feminist. Oh, we have a face mask. Cute. It looks like this. It's very cute. I like it. In our world today, you can't have too many face masks. <laughs> Uh, then we have this little, I think it's just like a sketching notebook. It's not lined or anything. And it says, She is Fierce. And we have our book, which is Madeline Watts, The Inland Sea. And what is this? In the early 19th century, British explorer John Oxley traversed the unknown wilderness of central Australia in search of water. He never found it, but the myth of the island sea was taken up by other men. And over the years, search parties walked out into the desert, dying as they tried to find it. Two centuries later, Oxley's great-great-great-granddaughter is reeling from her own self-destructive obsessions, drinking heavily, sleeping with strangers, wandering Sydney streets at night, navigating an affair with an ex-lover. She works as an emergency dispatch operator, tracking the violence, floods, and fires that bloom and rage across Australia during an increasingly unstable year. Reckless and adrift, she prepares to leave. The Inland Sea is a fierce and beautiful novel about coming of age in a dying world. Okay. And it's only 252 pages. And then we have like our little pamphlet for the November 2020 box. 
There's a letter from the team. Uh, it talks about what's in the box. An interview with Madeline Watts. This is her debut novel. We have an ode to Ruth Bader Ginsburg in here. Voices of our generation. Vibing and thriving with Elizabeth Rachel. She's the artist uh, for the artwork that we've seen. Uh, for the December box, it says, As we come to the end of 2020, we're bookending what's been an unprecedented year with a dazzling box all about reflection, resilience, and readiness for the new year. The perfect bookish gift. And, oh, it also says, We're delighted to have launched our Brave Girls Book Club, a subscription box and interactive online space for young female readers. All books that matter subscribers get 20% off their first with code BTM20. Diverse reads and powerful protagonists in each box. The perfect gift for the young feminist in your life. About books that matter. The award-winning and best-selling book subscription box. How can we expect women and girls to grow up empowered if they don't see themselves represented in what they read? Books that matter is a brand putting women's writing in the spotlight through unique reading experiences. The main way we achieve this is through our book subscription boxes, each capturing an important feminist theme to enlighten, educate, and empower. Each box contains a book by female authorship and at least three themed gifts by independent female creatives, delivered to feel like a gift every month. Books That Matter also encompasses events with high-profile authors, two podcasts, an online members book club, and merchandise. And then there's other, like, discount codes for other things in here as well. So neat! Two new books to add to my stack. And I imagine soon I should be getting that uh, Brave Girls Book Club box. So maybe it'll come in this vlog. We'll see. I don't expect to actually finish anything tomorrow just because I've got to catch up on my buddy reads of these. And I haven't even started my buddy read of Scammed and I'm supposed to read this this week. So... That is my goal. I think this is on script, so I'm gonna be listening to this. And maybe I'll do a time lapse again of me doing my little paint by number thing. I've gotten a lot farther in it, but I still have a lot left to do. So that's what I'll probably do. Also, I have to edit a video tomorrow. So we'll just see. All right, I'll talk to you later. So yesterday I managed to finish quite a few books. Let me start with I finished Scammed which is the sequel to The Deceivers. The Deceivers is the group book. Scammed is the second and this also completes my All I Want for Book Miss is You uh, read a romance or a book with a friend group and there is a friend group in here and oh okay so the first book four stars. And this was also a reread for me as well, but this one is five stars and I cannot wait to read the third book, which is Payback. I think that comes out in February of 2021, but I was very fortunate to be gifted an ARC by, or an e-ARC uh, by the author. And so I'm really excited to 
get to read that and I will be buddy reading that next week with Clint and Kehlani and oh I can't wait this is so good and I also finished my other buddy read early so I finished both Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn while reading these it was really interesting going back and forth and the person that went through this wow like figured out how these go to that that was just impressive i do think i will uh in the future if i reread which i probably will um i'll read them in order where i read empire of storms first and then tower of dawn but i enjoyed them both very much this one, Empire Storms, I would say I give this four stars. Crazy things happened in here, but Tower of Dawn, oh my gosh. Like, so as I was reading it, uh, it I happened to look back at everything that I said about these in my little buddy group, my buddy chat group, and every comment I made was about Tower of Dawn, and I was just like, oh snap, or you know, things like that. There was just... Oh my gosh, so much in this book. And this this was five stars. Absolutely. Oh, I can't really tell you anything about these because there are books five and six or six and seven. I don't know. In the Throne of Glass series. But all I can really tell you about this Throne of Glass series as it follows a girl named Selena Sardothian who is um, this kick-ass king's assassin and she's so much more than that but without spoiling anything throughout the series that's all I can tell you but really enjoyed these and these weren't part of my Mary Bookmas stuff and then today I've started the Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan and this is my Once Upon a Book Club book and it also completes the challenge Baby It's Cold Outside read a cozy book and I just got to the first gift in here so uh, I'm on page 167 so I'm like more than a third but not quite halfway oh I'm also listening to this I found it on I think I'm listening to it on Hoopla. Yeah, I'm listening to it on Hoopla. And uh, I'm listening to this Christmas story while I'm doing like my little Christmas decorations. You can see I've got lights going on and I'm getting ready to do my tree and I'm doing some other decor, which I may film me putting up my tree and stuff. I don't know if I'll film everything else, but I'm filming, I'll film my tree. Anyway, I'm listening to this and it's now time to open the first gift so I thought I would come on here and do that. So if you don't know as you're reading these you get to certain pages where it says open your gift for whatever and you go into the box and you find the gift that has that page number on it. So here it says Posey bagged up three packets of Christmas cards painted by a local artist and added a hand wrapped gingerbread man. On the house she handed it over with a dazzling smile and another family of happy customers left the cafe here is our gift and it has this cute little stuffed gingerbread I think it's an ornament that we can hang up and so I probably will either prop it up on my shelves or hang it up or something but I'm guessing these are Christmas cards very cute so we've got like a bear with some hot cocoa we have this reindeer that says be merry and bright and a penguin skein saying baby it's cold outside those are cute also we have the print for the box that says it's the most wonderful time of year maybe I'll just like put these all on my shelves and we'll just set our little gingerbread man I don't know where we're gonna set him set him over here cute okay and the next gift is not until page 352 so I may or may not get to that today I don't know and I have some packages here so I went by the post office and I had this and all I can guess is that this is a gift from somebody so I thought I'd open it up on here Oh my gosh, I think this is from Kaylani. This has got to be from Kaylani. She did say she was going to send me this, so 
I have to assume it's from her. There's no receipt or anything, no gift receipt. She sent me Crescent City by Sarah J. Moss. Like, oh my goodness. I've been really, really wanting to read this. I'm super excited to have this. And if this is not Kaylani, which I'll ask, um, whoever it was, definitely comment down below and let me know. But thank you. I'm, oh my goodness. Just thank you. Kaylani or whoever sent this to me. Thank you so, so much. I am super excited to read this. This is uh, Sarah J. Moss's first adult fantasy, uh, whereas the rest are like YA. Let me read what this says. Also, look at these end pages. Oh, okay. So pretty. Does the back look the same? Yeah. Okay, this says, Bound by blood, tempted by desire, unleashed by destiny, Bryce Quinlan had the perfect life. Working hard all day and partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friends, leaving her bereft, wounded, and alone. When the accused is behind bars, but the crime start up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation. She'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Hunt Athalar is a notorious fallen angel. Now enslaved to the archangels, he once attempted to overthrow. His brutal skills and incredible strength have been set to one purpose, to assassinate his boss's enemies. No questions asked. But with a demon wreaking havoc in the city, he's offered an irresistible deal. Help Bryce find the murderer, and his freedom will be within reach. As Bryce and Hunt dig deep into Crescent City's underbelly, they discover a dark power that threatens everything and everyone they hold dear, and they find in each other a blazing passion, one that could set them both free if they'd only let it. With unforgettable characters, sizzling romance, and page-turning suspense, this richly inventive new fantasy series by number one Times, number one New York Times best-selling author Sarah J. Moss delves into the heartache of loss, the price of freedom, and the power of love. And I know that like everybody has loved this, that's read it, and it's also thicker than I thought it was gonna be like, wow. Holy cow! This book is 799 pages. You know what though? I ain't mad. I'm looking forward to reading this. Like, I'm so excited. Thank you again. Oh my goodness. And then I also got this, which I think is my Brave Girls Book Club. And uh, figured, I think I opened the other one, the books that matter earlier in this vlog. So this is perfect to open this one in here as well. Okay, so it comes in the Books That Matter box. I do hope that this is the Brave Girls one. No. They sent me... Uh-oh. They sent me the same thing. I need to write them. Because I'm supposed to get... one of these and one of the brave girls books ah, okay well we've already seen what's in that box okay well i guess that's it for an update i have to go and write them now and uh find out what's going on with my box so i will just talk to you later okay it's just a couple of minutes later uh i have written the books that matter people and just waiting on a response back from them but i forgot that i actually do have one other thing to show you so my laptop is quite a few years old and it's having a hard time keeping up with everything that i need to do with all of my videos and editing and all of that and like storage space and everything and while I'm trying to edit, like the screen flashes black and all kinds of stuff. The battery has gone kaput and so there's no battery in it anymore. We had to take that out. And yeah, it's just, it's got issues. And so this is, this is my Christmas present really. And I'm super excited about it. But I got me a new laptop and I'm very happy. It is the Microsoft Surface Book 3 super 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 excited about it this is heavy this box is heavy but i thought i'd do a little unboxing here okay this plastic's really tight and it doesn't want to open oh they have this handy little pull tab ah. Ah. so 
here it is. This is my new beauty. Yeah, there's a camera on the outside. I'm not really sure why, but there is. Here we go. And then there's like a button. I don't know if it works if it's not plugged in, but there's a button here to release this and this can actually work as a tablet. Yeah, it doesn't work unless it's got power. I picked this because uh, I did a bunch of research on the, like the best laptops for video editing and stuff and this was up there with the MacBook Pro and I considered the MacBook but then when I got to looking at it there were things that I didn't quite like. Like for example, this has an SD port like to put your SD card in from your camera which is super handy or maybe it's this side and we have usb ports and just yeah this is this is awesome what else comes in here i also got the the pen that goes along with it because that was on sale this is also on sale it was like 300 dollars off its normal price this is heavy i don't know what this is power cord maybe yeah Dude, this power cord weighs a freaking ton. Okay, I guess this, this is weird. Okay, this is what plugs into the computer. It plugs in like that, I guess. That's bizarre. Okay, and then other than my little pamphlet of like instruction manual or whatever. That's it, that's all that comes in here. I mean the box is like heavy duty. The computer's not terribly heavy. This one is a, hold on, I can tell you the specifics. 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor, two terabyte, 32 gig RAM, NVIDIA GeForce, GTX 1660, yeah. It's supposed to be good for video editing, so I'm super excited. Okay, that's it for this little update. That was probably way too long for this unboxing. <laughs> okay, I haven't put my tree up yet. I have continued working on my lights here, and I've been, like, wrapping gifts and stuff. I'll eventually get to the tree. Maybe not tonight. I don't know. We'll see. But I did get to the next gift in my book. So I'm like really far into this now. I'm totally finishing this tonight. I'm on page 352 and it says, Beth was relieved to see her mother looking relaxed and content. Oh, before that it says, the place smelled of cinnamon and cloves and Suzanne was sifting, Suzanne was sifting flour into a bowl. So maybe it's something like seasonings or something like that. It could be some kind of like baking mix maybe Ooh. okay so we have this bag here and this cute little wooden spoon and this is like a nice like leathery feeling bag and it says grandma's pumpkin spice cake and on the back we have the recipe cool so inside we have the plastic bag of the cake mix well we're totally gonna have to make this that's cool and this bag is so cute. Okay, so the next gift is on page 370, and then we have one at 402. So these will be close behind. There's only, it says an hour and 48 minutes left on my audiobook, but I think I'm listening to it. Yeah, I'm listening to it at two times speed. So I think it's actually half that amount of time. So yeah, I'll be finished with this book probably before I ever even start the tree. So, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so it's only been like 5-10 minutes since my last check-in, but I'm at my next gift. And this says, Hannah found a knife and a chopping board. So, I'm guessing knife or chopping board. Or both. It's a cute wooden tree one and it says, eat, drink, and be merry. This is cute. I'm going to stick it on my shelf too. Where can I stick it? Yeah, let's move that. 
We'll put it right here. Cute. Okay. Oh. There we go. Okay, so all we have left is this one. And it says on here for Adam from a Hannah. This is page 402. So it'll probably only be a couple more minutes and I'll be back with the last gift because there's only like this much left in the book. Okay, so I am at my next gift, which is for page 402. Now there are only 410 pages, so I pretty much can tell you about this book at this point. And I'm going to say I give this four stars. It is about... Oh goodness. So we have these three sisters who, when they were young, their parents died in like a mountain climbing accident. There was an avalanche and uh, their mother asked her best friend Suzanne if anything were to ever happen to them, if Suzanne would take care of their girls. And Suzanne was with them in this climb and there were five people that went up and only one that survived and that was Suzanne. So she has raised these three girls and they were all raised in the Scottish Highlands which is where Suzanne still lives and where Posey, the youngest of the three girls, still lives and she helps her mom with the shop and uh, other a bunch of other things and she also does like rescuing uh, hikers and things like that and then the two older sisters actually live in New York all three sisters have their own issues going on they're all kind of struggling in their own lives with one thing or another and none of them really are leaning on each other for the support that really they could be given and they get together once a year in Scotland with their mother with their parents and this year they're all just really struggling one way or another and when they come together they kind of they lean on each other the way they should have been leaning on each other and it's it's super cute I give it four stars I really enjoyed it it's perfect to get you into that holiday spirit kind of thing okay so now let's go on to our gift it says Melly scrambled to her feet with another gift. This one's for Adam from Hannah. And that's what we have right here. And we have a keychain. It says, oh, and there's a key on it. <laughs> Not a real key, but it says, oh, I don't want to say actually what it says, but we have a cute little key and it says Pride and Prejudice. It is a book keychain. Here we go. Get it to focus. Very cute. And there's our little key. That's adorable. Okay, so that's the last gift for this box. And I'm going to go and finish this. I'm wrapping this one gift. It's We play this game every year and it's like a multi-wrapped gift. And it's many many layers <laughs> where everybody has to try to open it where while wearing oven mitts and somebody's rolling dice and you have to pass the oven mitts and stuff when the person rolling the dice gets a double but there's like a gazillion layers <laughs> so it's like the gift is inside a box and that box is wrapped and then that box is put inside another box and that box is wrapped and there's wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and yeah to the point that it's a small gift that ends up in a giant box. And right now I'm wrapping the giant box. Uh, but it is also after midnight. So not putting the tree up tonight. But maybe I can do it in the morning. I don't know. I'll probably do it tomorrow. But I've got to go to bed. So I'm going to finish my book and I'll talk to you tomorrow.
So I thought I'd film in front of my Christmas tree. So sorry if I'm too backlit, but I thought it was pretty, so I wanted to put it back here. So yesterday, I pretty much spent the majority of day, the day just like being lazy. Uh, and I did get some reading done. Uh, I was physically reading Meeting by Nina Kariki Hoffman, uh, which is the second book in the Magic Next Door series. And I also would go back and forth between reading this and listening to Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I didn't finish either of them yesterday, but I did today. So let me start out with Meeting because this is the first one I finished today. This is four stars. What I can tell you about Thresholds which is the first book, is that our main character, Maya, she she loses her best friend to cancer and her whole family picks up and moves uh, from Idaho to Spores, Spores Ferry, Oregon. And Maya is dealing with the loss of her friend and starting over in a new place. And there's this really interesting apartment building right next door that seems to have a lot of interesting characters living in it. And one day, the day before school starts, a fairy flies into Maya's room and sleeps on her bed. And then the next day, people from the apartment next door, as well as somebody else, mistakes Maya for one of them because she has this smell about her from the fairy. And next thing Maya knows, she has an alien egg attached to her arm. And this is a super cute story. It is a duology, but as I was getting close to the end of this one, I was like, how is this story supposed to end? Like, how is this supposed to wrap up? And it's left a very, 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 very open-ended. Open and I, you know, I love the book. I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, and so I give it four stars, but this book was a great setup for continuing the series and so i was kind of like confused and i looked multiple places including the author's website just to make sure that i wasn't wrong and that there was more books or something like that but no this is it this is the end and this book was published in 2011 so that's it so if you don't like very open-ended stories this is not one for you it doesn't wrap everything up all nice and neat um but it, it is a great story sorry i've got a cat in a christmas bag over here okay so then on to beach read by emily henry i give this five stars this book was not at all what i expected i was expecting this to be like a light fluffy uh summery <laughs> contemporary uh which you know opposite of the cold it is right now. I thought this would be just a fun fluffy book. And it was fun but it was definitely not all fluff. I mean it started out and I was just like wait what? So right off from the beginning we learned that our main character uh, January Andrews she she's a romance writer and she believes well used to believe love conquers all and you know, just everything can be better with love. And she had to deal with her mother getting diagnosed with cancer and her father being this strong, loving man who kind of kept everybody's spirits up and made dance parties and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, her mom beat the cancer and things it hit a bump in their marriage. They ended up separated. Then the, her, her mother's cancer came back and they ended up getting back together and everything was like peaches and roses and just amazing and lovey-dovey and that's what she knew until a year ago when her father died of a stroke. And at the funeral January learns that her father has been carrying on with another woman and had this long affair and has this other house that he shared with this other woman and January is very very disillusioned and from that it causes some serious writer's block because being a romance writer she no longer really trusts in love 
So she's really struggling with writing this book that she's supposed to write. So she goes to this beach house that was her father's love nest or whatever with the intents of packing up or getting rid of any, everything in there and selling the place. And while she's there trying to write her book. And it just so happens that the boy next door is her arch nemesis from college. And he's also a writer and he's always written in a very disillusioned literary fiction kind of way like the world sucks type stories and they clash right off the bat and uh, they end up getting into this bet because they're both dealing with writer's block. They end up getting into this bet where he has to write a rom-com and she has to write a oh woe is me type book and the first to get their book sold and published wins. And then she has to take him on like rom-com lessons and take him on these like things that people would find romantic and teach him about like romantic stuff. And he takes her to like this doomsday cult type stuff and researching and that kind of stuff. And yeah, <laughs> it's very intense. This was so good. This was so much more than I thought and I was really just really pleased with it and also I love a bookish book and this is just this is great. So this week oh my goodness I completed seven books. So I finished Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn my buddy reads with my little buddy group and that was four and five stars. Scammed, which is the second in the, the Deceiver series or Veil vale Hall series, five stars. The Christmas Sisters, I think I gave that four stars. Don't Tempt Me, I gave 3.75. Meeting, I gave four stars. And Beach Read, I gave five stars. So I had another incredible reading week. I am just so pleased with how my reading went and I got so much read. Now granted this week at the beginning of the week I had to edit a few videos and stuff and I was actually supposed to edit more throughout the week but I kind of just pushed all of those to another time so I may not have quite as much free time next week for reading so I'm glad I was able to get as much done as I could this week. Let me get my list of prompts and I can tell you what I've completed. I'm also wearing my Mary Bookmas shirt that Marty got me last year and I absolutely adore this shirt. <laughs> okay, so Beach Read was my favorite things. Uh, read a book featuring favorite trope, which I love bookish books. The Christmas Sisters did Baby It's Cold Outside, read a cozy book. And Scammed was All I Want for Bookmas is You, read a book with a romance or uh, a friend group and this had a friend group. So I completed three of the bookmas challenges and these other four just completed other like wheel or have I read it challenges. I've also had a lot of fun decorating my library this year or this week and uh, I may actually do a little bit more decorating next week if I have time but we'll see. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely